and sit down. Dell's XPS 13 has been our favorite laptop overall for the past couple of years, thanks to its lightweight, long battery life, beautiful infinity edge screen and premium design. To keep up with the times, Dell has upgraded its 13-inch flagship with Intel's new 8th Gen Core, Akakabi Lake R, quad-core processor platform. Though the new, $1,299 model is otherwise no different from the 7th gen powered XPS 13 that Dell continues to sell, it offers much stronger performance and longer battery life while maintaining all the features that make this the best consumer laptop you can buy. If you want a sub $350 Windows laptop, you usually have to settle for a dull, low-res screen, lackluster design, and mediocre performance. For $349, $429 with Windows Office, Acer's Aspire E15 E5, 575-33BM defies those expectations, providing a colorful 1080p display, solid build quality and a reasonable Core i3 processor. Throw in over 8 hours of battery life, a DVD drive and just about every part you can imagine, and this 15.6-inch laptop is a real winner for consumers on a budget. Design, solid. Acer's Aspire E15 is made of sturdy black plastic with a dark gray, matte lid that has a subtle crosshatch pattern and texture, along with a deck that looks like faux brushed aluminum. The notebook seems to have solid build quality, because it didn't creak or buckle during my use, the keyboard didn't show any signs of flex while typing either. At 10.2 x 1.5 x 1.2 inches and 5.06 pounds, the E15 E5, 575, 33BM is bulky but it's not much bigger than other budget 15-inch laptops. The Dell Inspiron 15 5000 is heavier, 5.2 pounds, but thinner, 0.92 inches, while the HP Notebook 15 ba 9DX, 4.6 pounds, 0.96 inches thick, is both thinner and lighter. The 14-inch Asus VivoBook E403 Say is a much smaller alternative, at 3.18 pounds and 0.7 inches thick. Ports everything you need plus DVD. The Aspire's thick frame leaves plenty of room for both a DVD writer and almost every conceivable port. The left side houses a full-size Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 connectors, HDMI out, VGA out and a USB Type-C 3.1 port that's good for data but that can't be used to charge the laptop. The right side contains the DVD drive, a third USB port and a 3.5mm audio jack. The front lip offers an SD card reader. Keyboard and touchpad, comfy and accurate. The Acer E15's keyboard offers a good typing experience that's free from any of the shallowness or flex we find on many budget laptops. The keys provide a full 1.5 millimeters of vertical travel and require 64 grams of force to actuate, a combination which prevented me from bottoming out as I typed. I reached a strong 100 words. Many users will appreciate the dedicated numeric keypad, which makes using the calculator or editing spreadsheets easier. The 4.2x 3-inch buttonless touchpad provides reasonably accurate navigation around the desktop, but its service felt a little slippery to me. The pad seemed to have a little trouble with pinch to zoom, as it didn't always respond right away when I performed the gesture in Chrome browser or Windows 10's photo app. Three-finger swiping to switch between apps worked every time. Display, surprisingly good. It's rare that you find a 1920x1080 display on a sub $400 laptop, let alone a display that covers this much of the color gamut. The Aspire E15's 15.6 inch screen output set a sharp 1080p resolution with tones that are vibrant, though not always accurate, and very limited viewing angles. When I watched a trailer for Spider Man, Homecoming, the reds and blues in Spidey's costume popped but appeared a bit oversaturated. According to our colorimeter, the Acer E15 can reproduce an impressive 159% of the sRGB color gamut, which is well above the 94% mainstream laptop average. 
that showing also trounces competitors in the E15's price range, such as the HP Notebook 15, 70%, Asus VivoBook E400 3C, 68%, Intel Inspiron 15, 5000, 72%. Unfortunately, the numbers here don't tell the full story, as the viewing angles were quite narrow. Dark images began inverting at just 45 degrees to the left or right. Don't try using this laptop in direct sunlight. The Aspire E15 E5-575-33BM registered just 215 nits on her light meter, well below the 276 nit category average but actually better than showings by the Notebook 15, 174 nits, and VivoBook E403 say, 201 nits. The Inspiron 15, 5000, 213, nits, had a nearly identical score. Audio, decent. The Aspire E15 speakers offer output that's quite accurate and loud enough to fill a medium-sized room. When I played Deep Purple Smoke on the Water, I could hear a clear separation of sound amid the drums, vocals and guitar. There was only a hint of tinniness in the high tones. Performance, ready for, light, multitasking.